boys and girls, welcome to story time with me, Sophia. Today, we are going to learn about the prophet Lut. His story is a wee bit different from those of the other prophets, as he was not just trying to get the people to believe in the oneness of Allah and the beauty of the hereafter, but also he fought against homosexuality and rape. These are two specific sins that are extremely, extremely disapproved of in Islam, boys and girls. Allah dislikes anyone who commits these lustful and violent acts. And I hope after this episode, you will understand why. Prophet Ibrahim salam, left Egypt accompanied by his nephew, Lut. May Allah be pleased with him. They traveled to the city of Sodom, which was on the western shores of the Dead Sea. This is the name it was given in the Old Testament of the Bible and is no longer in existence today after Allah destroyed it in its entirety, turning it upside down. The city was filled with evil. Its residents robbed and killed lots of lots of travelers and even people amongst their village. Another common evil amongst them was that men had relationships with other men instead of with women. You see, boys and girls, Allah decreed that relationships of an adult nature should be between a male and a female, a man and a woman, not two males or two females. There is a special bond that is only shared between a mommy and a daddy or a husband and wife. Allah forbids any other kind of relationship. That is Allah's decree. And that is why Allah sent down Prophet Adam and Hawa, as our Christian friends say, Adam and Eve, to be examples for mankind. The unnatural and sinful acts of two males or two females getting too close is known as sodomy after the city of Sodom. In this city, just as people had no shame in being modest about their wealth or worshiping idols, they also had no shame in their physical relationships. Hmm, stuck for a lot. It was at the peak of these crimes and sins that Allah revealed to Prophet Lut alayhi salam that he should summon the people to give up their indecent behavior. But they were so deep in their immoral habits that they refused to listen to Lut's preaching. Swamped in all of their unnatural desires, they refused to listen even when Lut warned them of Allah's punishment. Instead, they threatened to drive him out of the city if he kept on preaching to them. Now, he wasn't the first nor the last prophet to be ignored and mocked. We have heard many, many other stories of prophets who had to fight hard to convince the people of the truth of Islam. Alhamdulillah, Prophet Lut knew how difficult his uncle and other prophets had it, so he was persistent. You see, boys and girls, if it's one lesson we have learned from our prophets, we have been learning to be persistent and to persevere. When Allah gives you a task, or when you know what you are doing is right and will make Allah happy, you keep doing it, no matter what. No matter how hard it may be, no matter how many people may disagree, once you know in your heart, then it's worth it. We have to fight all of shaitan's tricks to make sure that we get to Jannah, boys and girls. Remember, the beauty of the hereafter is far better than anything on this world. Allah the Almighty revealed, the people of Lut, those who dwell in the towns of Sodom and Palestine, opposed the messengers when their brother Lut said to them, will you not fear Allah and obey him? Verily, I am a trustworthy messenger to you. So fear Allah, keep your duty to him and obey me. No reward do I ask for you for listening to my message of Islam. My reward is only from the Almighty Allah. 
he asked the men, why do you leave the women who should be your wives to be with other men? He warns them that these were very, very big sins. Plus, there is so much blessing in a true marriage between a husband and a wife. Getting married, boys and girls, is completing half of your deen. That means that when a righteous man marries a righteous lady, they are halfway to Jannah. Why would you want to lose out on those blessings? I know I don't. The disbelievers said, if you don't stop harassing us, O Lut, you will be sent far, far away. He said, I am indeed of those who disapprove with severe anger and fury of your evil ways. And he asked Allah to protect him and his family from all of the temptations and the treachery, what had been happening all around him. As with all of the other prophets, Allah saved him and his family, all except for one woman, his wife. She was amongst those who remained behind. The doings of Lut's people sat in his heart. Their unwholesome reputation spread throughout the land while he struggled against them. As the years passed by, he persisted in his mission, but to no avail. No one responded to his call and believed except for the members of his family. But unfortunately, even in his household, not all of the members believed. Prophet Lut's wife, like Nuah's wife, was a disbeliever. Allah gives us examples of those who disbelieve, the wife of Prophet Nuh and the wife of Prophet Lut. They were so close to our most righteous prophets, but somehow, despite hearing and seeing what had happened around them, they both betrayed their husbands by rejecting Islam. Even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle boys and girls did not accept Islam. This is Allah's way of showing us that sometimes even the best people fail. And sometimes, no matter how hard you try or what you do, you may not succeed in getting everybody to listen to you or like you. Just keep doing what Allah will love and he will make sure that everything falls in place as it should. You can't fight what Allah has decreed, boys and girls. Prophet Lutz would have certainly been disappointed that his wife did not accept the guidance of Allah, that her own husband had practiced day and night. But Lutz still kept his faith. If home is supposed to be the place of comfort and rest, then Prophet Lut found none, for he was continuously tormented between inside and outside of his home. His life was continuous torture, and he suffered greatly but he remained patient and steadfast with his people. The years rolled by and still not one believed in him. Instead, they continued to belittle his message and mocked and challenged him. Bring us Allah's torment upon us if you are one of the truthful. The disbelievers dared him time after time. They refuted everything that he said. Prophet Lut just could not take it. He wanted to prove to them that Allah was the greatest and that they would get punished, but he did not want to harm them. He did not want Allah to reprimand them the way he did to the other cities in the past. He just wanted to save them from the pain and the suffering of the hellfire. Why couldn't they just understand he was trying to help them? But they were too stubborn. Overwhelmed with despair, Prophet Lut, alayhi salam, prayed to Allah to grant him victory and destroy the corruption. The angels left Prophet Ibrahim salam, and headed down to Sodom, the town of Prophet Lut. The angels reached the walls of the town in the middle of the afternoon. The first person who caught sight of them was Lut's daughter, who was sitting beside the river, filling her jug with water. When she lifted up her face and saw them, she was stunned. She had never seen men that were so magnificent on earth. Such wonderful build and beautiful skin. One of the angels asked her, 
Oh, maiden, is there a place for us to rest? Remembering the character of her people, she replied, Stay here and do not enter until I inform my father and return. Leaving her jug by the river, she ran home to fetch Prophet Lut. Oh, father, she cried, you are wanted by young men at the town gate, and I have never before seen their faces. Lut felt distressed as he quickly ran to his guests. He asked them where they came from and where they were going. They did not answer his questions. Instead, they asked if he could host them. He started talking with them and emphasized the sinful actions and nature of his people. He feared for the safety of his guests, not knowing that they were angels, because he knew how dangerous life was in the city and how much danger his family was constantly in for trying to spread Islam. He knew that the disbelievers would not be pleased to see more people coming to try and change them. They had threatened to kill him before, and he did not want to endanger his guests. Lutz was filled with turmoil. He wanted to convince his guests, without offending them, not to spend the night. But it was all for their well-being. Yet, at the same time, he wanted to extend to them the best hospitality, as they were, in fact, his guests. In vain, he tried to make them understand the perilous situation and how their safety was in jeopardy. At last, they all agreed that the best idea was for them to wait until nightfall so that no one would see them walking through the town and entering the home of Lut. What do you think happened next when the angels entered the city, boys and girls? Well, we know that nothing bad could happen to them because, well, they're angels. So what do you think they than to the people of the sinful city. Another flood? A drought? <laughs> oh no, I promise you, what happened to them is way worse. Just you wait and see. We're going to take a short commercial break and when we return, we'll find out what happens to the disbelievers in the city of Sodom, the city of Prophet Lut. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs>